Hi, Katie. Hi guys, happy Sunday. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can see us, okay. Everybody, thank you for watching give me a thumbs up if you can hear us if you can see us okay I'm here with Gladys I see a question is a donkey the same as a mule no they're not they're two different animals uh, mules are the product of horses and um, donkeys so the donkey is a donkey the mule is a product of a horse and a donkey and um, meals are sterile so they cannot reproduce uh, they're also different to train they have different personalities and the way that they learn is also different they're extremely smart and they're truly amazing and loyal animals if you are able to train them from a very young age um, Gladys here is not doing much today but we have a little training session happening behind us so you will see and, and I'm not going to interrupt because he's doing so, so good. But right behind me, right there, you can see Mr. Arturo doing some training. And that's why we use that awesome training arena that we have behind us. So it can be a little bit scary for these guys, but Arturo is doing really, really good. And we're going to show him just a little bit. I want to move the camera. There we go. So he is doing really good over there, as you can see, even with that very big fan right there, that can be a little bit scary. So he is doing really good. Look at that, doing the zigzag over there. And I'm just um, massaging Gladys so that she doesn't walk away. But he is doing really good over there. Good job, Arturo. Look at that, you guys, how awesome. That means that if he can do all of his training well, then he is just one step closer to getting adopted. And we do try to teach these guys additional skills so that they can find a home. We train them on their basic skills, like we always talk about, you know, haltering and leading and picking up their hooves and standing still for the farrier. All of that is really, really good for them to find their forever homes. But sometimes some donkeys show a little bit of interest in other things. So in this case, Arturo has a great personality to probably pack a little bit. So we put just a barely any weight on him just to see if he feels comfortable, you know, and then we asked him to do the obstacles and he did great as you guys saw. So he's doing really, really good. And he is done. Torture is done for Arturo. So he is going back with his friends. Good job, Arturo. We'll see you later, buddy. He did so good, you guys. And now he is done. He is going home. <laughs> that was pretty cool to be able to see that firsthand that was happening right there. And as you saw, that was a pretty short uh, lesson, right? So we sometimes don't necessarily need to spend an hour with an animal that has all of their skills. Sometimes it's just like a little refresher. It's also enrichment so that they don't spend all of their time inside of the corral doing nothing. So it's really good to try and keep it up so that the donkeys get used to the different handling, the different skills, and then they also have fun doing it so they come out here and we put them on the obstacle course and then we see what they can do so I'm here today with Gladys and we may see some donkeys coming in and out and that is totally fine we definitely want the donkeys to feel comfortable with us here in the camera and then hopefully you guys could get to see it too so Gladys right here 
and she is really just kind of falling asleep <laughs> as I pet her. But she is a very sweet girl, huh? Aren't you? I'm just such a sweet girl. Yes, you are. Yes. So Ms. Gladys right here is 37 years old, and she is a love bug, as you can see. She's one of our senior donkeys, so she lives here at Long Hopes, and she's definitely one of the favorites here because, oh wow, Julia, thank you for donating. That is so wonderful, thank you. You know, those donations go directly to the care of these guys, so Long Hopes is so cool that we actually don't rent out any space to have our animals. We own all of our land. So when you donate to us, we don't use it to pay off a loan. We don't use it to pay rent anywhere. All of that money goes directly, directly to the care of these guys. So that makes a huge difference. Um, and everything that you see behind me, uh, all of the obstacles, all of the barns that we do, Thank you, Katie, for the donation. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. So all of the barns and the obstacles that we use to train our animals and all of the care that we provide and the medical care and the visits to, you know, to the vet and farrier care, chiropractic care, dental care, all of those things um, are afforded thanks to your donations. That's where your donations go. So thank you so much for all of that. Um, so I was talking about Gladys. So Gladys is right here. Really, she's just falling asleep. I mean, she was supposed to be the star of the show. So let me make sure that you guys can see her. You just want to stand behind me? That's all you want to do? Let's see. Let's move back a little bit so that we can show your face. People came to see you, Miss Gladys. Let's see. Let's see if that works. There we go. <laughs> There we go, Miss Gladys. What a good girl. I just need to be able to see your questions. So if you have any questions about Long Hopes, about um, our programs, about Gladys right here, or if you have any questions for Gladys, we'll ask her and we'll see if, if she answers. So I am so happy to be here today on a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And I hope you are all having an amazing day at home. And I hope that you can see glad is very, very good. So we keep trying to do these videos to try and keep you connected to the donkeys, especially now during this crazy pandemic that a lot of us are stuck at home and we can't go anywhere. So Long Homes is trying to bring the donkeys to you um, so that the donkeys can feel connected and you guys can feel connected to the work that we do. So I do see a question there, but I can't see it because I'm with Gladys. Are you having any volunteers come through at this time? So we do have some volunteers. Volunteer, let me move the camera a little bit Ooh, so that I can see. <laughs> you can see Gladys. We do have some volunteers coming and it is pretty limited right now. So we are only allowing two to three volunteers per shift um, just to try to keep everybody safe. We are requiring everybody to wear masks. I have my mask right here. And we do um, expect everybody to um, do social distancing as well. And, you know, we, we are expecting volunteers to try and work indep independently as much as they can so that we can make sure that everybody's staying safe. But yes, if you are interested in volunteering, you do have to live kind of close. Um, most of our volunteers are from Denver and then surrounding areas. If you live two hours away, we usually recommend that you try to find a closer place to home because the two hour drive plus only three hours of volunteering plus another two hour drive, it, it's gonna get kind of tiring after a while. So we do ask uh, volunteers to try and, and um, if they wanna volunteer that they live a little bit closer. 
Does she gallop trot at 37? No, she does not. So Gladys is, um, she is developing a little bit of arthritis. She, she's, she's pretty old at 37 and those are human years. I'm not making any sort of multiplication or anything like that for donkeys. They can live up to 30, 35 and in some rare cases, even up to 50, 55 years old. So these guys live a very long time. Oh, thank you, Bruce, so much for the donation. That's incredible, thank you. Um, so these guys can live pretty long lives. So if you think about it, it's a pretty long commitment to adopt a donkey. Um, but at her age, with her arthritis, you know, she just really wants to be right behind me. So with her arthritis, she does move a little bit slower, and that's okay. We have been giving her some supplements for her joints and in her meals every day. And we also put orthopedic boots on her hooves because um, the orthopedic boots don't really fix arthritis, but they're padded. So they provide an extra layer of support for her joints every time she takes a step. So that definitely makes a difference and right now we're washing them so she doesn't have them on but we're inside of the arena and the arena has very soft soft sand so it's really good for her to kind of hang out in here how many donkeys are there now so right now we have 45 donkeys and we have um, I think we have another donkey coming in next week so that's that's our numbers right now we did have a few adoptions so if you are a sponsor we um, will be sending that information to show you who, which donkey got adopted and where they're going and we got some wonderful videos and pictures of the adoption it was so incredible so if you'd like to learn more about the adoption stories and where the donkeys are going then go ahead and sign up to be a sponsor just like myself I sponsor Gilly but Gilly doesn't get adopted he lives here um, but if you'd like to you know get pictures and updates and videos on your donkey and see where they're going sign up to be a sponsor on our website will she eat various foods that a human will eat like horse eats carrots and apples so we strongly recommend that donkeys stick to their diet of grass hay and grass hay not including alfalfa when i say grass hay i am only referring to things like brome or timothy orchard all of those are okay hays to feed the donkeys definitely stay away from alfalfa because they actually do not do well in alfalfa alfalfa has a lot of protein and that would make definitely make them gain a lot of weight and they would end up obese also the alfalfa if they eat a lot of it there are some studies some scientific studies that shows a cause of anemia on donkeys that eat alfalfa so um, definitely do not feed that to them um, so another thing with the alfalfa is the fact um, that like i said they gain a lot of weight you could feed alfalfa to a horse for example but the problem there is Oh no, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Um, the alfalfa doesn't cause anemia, it's actually garlic. And I'll, I'll talk about that in, right after I'm done with this. So um, feeding alfalfa makes them actually gain lots of weight because donkeys have such, such an amazing metabolism system that they're very effective. So they don't need that many calories like a horse does. A horse is bigger, they burn a lot more energy. Um, whereas donkeys conserve a lot of their energy, so that's why they don't need high protein, a high protein diet. Carrots and apples are okay here and there as a treat, but they do have a lot of sugar, so they may not be the best treat to feed to a donkey. On top of that, donkeys like Gladys that are 37 years old don't really have a lot of teeth inside of their mouths, so if you give her a carrot, or an apple, she may choke. And you may have a pretty expensive vet bill, you know, trying to save your donkey. So stay away from carrots and apples. It's always better just to try to give them 
maybe a treat that's softer. So you could do something like cookies, like a graham cracker or something like that. Um, and I do know a lot of adopters that feed their donkeys just vegetables from their home. Like you can do lettuce or you can do uh, cucumber, things like that. They may not like it at first, but once, if you really stick to it and once they see it as a treat, maybe they'll change their mind about it. But definitely stay away from anything that's high sugar as it only makes them gain weight. Spoil them with attention, not food. We always say that. The one thing I wanted to clarify about the garlic is um, people feed garlic to horses. What do you have here, baby? People feed garlic to horses uh, during fly season. Uh, the garlic makes the horses smell kind of, you know, bad, and so the flies don't go up to them and don't bother them. Donkeys get affected by flies a lot more than they do with horses because of the oils on their coats. They smell a little bit different, and flies like it a lot more. So people that own donkeys always have a hard time keeping the flies off of them. And sometimes um, they learn that they can feed them garlic just like people do with horses. We don't feed garlic to our donkeys because there are a few scientific studies that have indicated that garlic somehow causes anemia in donkeys and that's why we don't feed it to them and we don't recommend people feeding garlic to uh, donkeys. What we do for the fly control around here is we do make them wear a fly mask. Gladys doesn't um, wear one because she is she can't see very well and we don't want to add an extra layer for her to see through. Um, so she doesn't wear the fly mask, but most of our donkeys do and that helps a lot. The other thing that we do is we make them wear socks on their legs and that is from SocksForHorses.com, S-O-X socksforhorses.com and they sell amazing products to help your horses and your donkeys fight, um, prevent the fly bites on their legs. So that's the other thing. We fly spray almost every day and it gets quite repetitive but that's something that our volunteers help us with so so much and if you're a volunteer and you're watching you know what I mean you're coming here to volunteer and we're always asking our volunteers to brush and to fly spray and sometimes it's so much work and it gets annoying and tiring but it helps the donkeys so much especially now during the winter and the spring and I know my adopters out there know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the flies are just a little bit too difficult to deal with with the donkeys. So that is something that I know a lot of people deal with. Um, and that's usually what we do. You can also use a fly sheet uh, on the donkeys that um, suffer the flies a little bit more. But all of those things are extremely good to keep the flies away. Um, clean the corral. We do clean the corral often to keep that manure out, which usually brings flies. We put fly traps and we also try to put fans inside of the shelters um, and turn them on because the, the fans do help keep those fly away. So it's, it's a lot of hard work, but if you stick to it and if you do it, it's definitely going to help your donkey um, feel better that the flies are not biting them so hard. So that's usually what we do. Oh, you're touching the camera with your ear, honey. All right, thank you so much for that question. And I am sorry for the long, long answer, but I made a little mistake about the, the garlic and the alfalfa, so I wanted to clarify that. Thank you everybody that has donated. You guys are awesome. Uh, your donations actually do make a huge difference here because we have been closed because of COVID. We have not been able to um, have that many tours as we usually do. And the tours are a huge part of our fundraising. So we haven't been able to do that, which has definitely hurt us a lot and affected the fundraising that we do. And as many of you know, we also have our awesome events twice a year that are fundraisers and we also haven't been able to do that so because 
of COVID, we have really been struggling, you know, with our fundraising and trying to uh, raise enough funds for all of our animals here. So your donations during these live videos make a huge difference. So please, if whatever you can donate, donate because it changes the lives for donkeys like Gladys. Huh? Hi, Gladys. Yes. Yes. Thank you everybody so much for coming live today with us on a Sunday. It's actually a beautiful day outside. It is super, super, super nice. Um, and the, the main reason why I wanted to come on today was because um, uh, you guys have heard about all of the fires that are um, happening in Colorado and how it's pretty scary what's going on and they haven't been able to uh, stop the fires and stuff so we've been getting a few phone calls from a few adopters that live in those areas to take their donkeys in case of an evacuation so in case they have to evacuate their animals are going to come here and another reason why your donations are so important is because we definitely want to make sure that we do have the room and the funds to take care of all of those animals that are going to need a temporary home if they lose their own so thank you to everybody that has donated thank you to everybody that continues to donate and making a difference you guys are amazing we couldn't ask for anything else huh Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. With the current events, do you feel the October event will take place for Halloween? So we're not thinking of doing an event this year because of COVID. So we may not even be able to do an event, um, which is it's pretty sad because we, you know, we do depend on those big events to bring in enough funds for the remaining of the year. So our October event, um, the goal of that event is that we raise enough funds to have our Halloween event. Oh, Gladys is peeing. We're gonna give her a few privacy. You done? Good. <laughs> so the event in October usually helps us raise enough funds so that we can um, buy all of the hay that we need for the remaining of the year. And then it you know, sets us up for success for the winter, which is you know, a pretty difficult time for, for the donkeys because they don't like the winter and we just wanna make sure that they are taken care of, that they have enough food, shelter, that they feel warm, and especially our seniors. Our seniors do get a lot of special care in the winter. They suffer the, the, the cold weather a lot more. So, you know during these uncertain times we just don't know what's going to happen but those events take so much organization that i know we're a few months out i know that but if we were actually doing an event i would be planning right now so because of that we just it's so uncertain we just don't know but we are whoa glad is this behind the camera <laughs> but because of that we are you know we're just we don't know what's going to happen and we haven't started to plan an event because it's everything is so uncertain and it's it takes a lot of effort on our part and it takes uh, some funds too so glad is that's the camera it's not a scratching post <laughs> um, because of that we you know we don't want to start planning a whole event that we may have to cancel um, it would it would take a lot from us to do that so that's why we just don't know Gladys Gladys all right Gladys has left but she may come back she's the star of my show so if she leaves we got no star you guys Gladys I think she's ready for lunch. It's 11, right on the dot. Do you do follow-ups on your adoption? Yes, we do. 
we try to reach out to the adopters after a couple of weeks of the adoption to make sure that everything is going okay. We also reach out a couple months later to see if they have any questions or if they need anything. And after that, we try and reach every six months to a year just to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, but every year we try to see if the... If <laughs> There she goes. <laughs> Bye, Gladys. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye, Gladys. Are you leaving? Gladys. She's not sure what she wants to do. Hi, baby. Hi. All right, we'll let her think about it. So yes, we do follow up on adoptions to make sure that the donkeys are doing okay. And then also to reach out to our um, adopters and see if they need any help. We are often just trying to make sure that it's a successful adoption. And if things are not going okay or the way that they expected, we just want to provide all the services that we can. So we're always available for questions. We're always available for any concerns. And in some cases, if the adoption wasn't a good one, let's just say that you know, they, uh, they adopted a pair of donkeys to um, be pets or um, take care of the other livestock, you know, to also be guards. We, you know, we're open to if it doesn't work out, let's say that the animals are not getting along with the other animals. Let's say that maybe there's a horse that the donkeys don't like or don't get along with. If anything like that were to happen, we are here for the adopters and for the animals. So we'll always try to either trade them out for another pair um, or we'll bring the donkeys back and um, until we can find another pair. But like I said, we are always trying to be a good support for our adopters and our animals to ensure that they are placed in good homes and in homes that they're happy with, you know? We do as much training and research about the donkeys but sometimes we don't know their histories sometimes we don't know where they came from or or what they've been through so what we know is what we tell the adopter and sometimes the donkeys you know we don't know if they'll get along with other livestock and we can't guarantee that they will or will not and sometimes it's just not a good fit and if that's the case then like i said we are more than happy to either trade them for another pair or just you know bring the donkeys back um, that's never an issue we always just want to make sure that the family's happy with uh, their new donkeys and that the donkeys are happy in their new home that's our that's our ultimate goal and the donkeys are always given a forever safety net so that's the other thing one of the reasons why Gladys is here Gladys had a wonderful home for 17 years but hey life happens right you guys and sometimes we move sometimes we change jobs or sometimes we lose our jobs or sometimes we have medical issues life happens and we have to make sure that we are here for the donkeys and for the families so Gladys had a wonderful home for many years and the owners called and they had to surrender her back to us and of course we took her back because we provide that lifelong safety net that no matter what at all long hopes donkeys can always come back to us so they'll have a home for five years they'll have a home for 10 years for 20 years you know whatever it is two years and if things um like i said don't work out or if crisis hits if life happens we are here for those families and we're here for those donkeys to provide the support that they're looking for so um, our donkeys always have a safe haven, haven to um, land on their hooves here at Long Hopes. Hi huh, Gladys. Yes she says. Yes she says. Thank you Eric. I love what we do too. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome the, the work that happens here at Long Hopes when we rehabilitate and when we rehome these guys into their new homes. 
um, it's really really cool and in some cases like Gladys she's in our sanctuary program so she um, is not up for adoption she gets to live with us for the rest of her life so that's that's pretty cool too that we're able to provide that forever home for for donkeys like Gladys she's so sweet <laughs> She, I try to put her on the camera and then she just keeps walking. People want to see you, honey. You're so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, Gladys and I are going to go and I'm going to feed her some lunch. So it is about 11 a.m. So thank you so much for watching today on this wonderful, beautiful Sunday. I am Victoria from the Long Hopes Donkey Shelter. And here joining me was Gladys today. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everybody that donated. You guys are the ones that make the difference around here. So thanks so much. Uh, please, if you are watching this video live, like it, let me know. If you're watching it later, let us know. Leave your comments if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys on the next live. You guys have a brave full day. Stay safe, stay sane. And if you're in the area or if you're visiting Colorado, reach out to us to schedule your next tour so that you can meet Gladys and all of the donkeys here. And like I said before, if you want any cool updates about adoptions or the things that we're doing with Gladys every month, you can sign up to be a sponsor. We send out monthly updates. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Say bye, Gladys. Bye.